Hi, I'm a possum and I find garbage. Today's garbage is The Last Light, an Irish ghost story. All right, f the intro, let's just get into it. The movie starts with some shots of an SUV driving around while insufferable white guy with acoustic guitar music infests the soundtrack. I'm feeling so disconnected. This goes on for two tedious minutes until we see our protagonist, the unfortunately named Rob Walker, driving around in his overexposed SUV. And then we cut to him arriving at his house where he complains to his wife, who I'm just gonna call Wifey McWife, about not being able to find batteries. Let's just take the batteries from the TV remote. Yeah, they're probably just as bad. I don't think I've changed them in four years. Rob needs batteries for his weird flashlight that has a camera built into it. Apparently, these things exist in real life. They're made for scuba diving. They don't make everything green as depicted in this movie, though. And why would they? The only reason they would make a camera monochrome like that is for night vision, which defeats the purpose of a flashlight you're meant to be able to see with your eyes. I guess they thought it would automatically make everything look creepy when things got boring. Okay, so Rob got a job boarding up the windows in some old building. He tells Wifey that he won't have a cell phone signal once he gets there. Why? Because it's convenient to the plot. So Rob drives around, we get a title sequence, and we see Rob pulling up to the gate outside the building. We then watch him get out of his car, unlock the gate, get back in his car, then slowly drive up to the building, then get out of his car again, and then he walks all the way back down to the gate to close it, and then he walks all the way back to his car. I don't want to just gloss over this. They seriously show the entire action in real time. From the start of the shot where Rob's car pulls up to the gate, to him returning to his car after closing it, that's two minutes and 37 seconds. Two minutes and 37 seconds. Why, directed George Clark, who inexplicably has a Wikipedia article, why did you feel the need to show the full two minutes and 37 seconds of this ultimately pointless action? Were you really that desperate to get this movie to the 82 minute minimum for distribution that you just had to pad it out? It might seem like I'm just harping on at this point, but this is the start of this movie's biggest flaw. It's insanely boring. It might actually be the most boring movie I've ever seen. Minutes at a time are devoted to showing absolutely nothing happening. I'm convinced the script for this movie could not have been more than 10 pages long, and that's assuming they even had a script. Half the time, it feels like they just shot a bunch of random walking around footage at this location they had access to, and then decided to retrofit it into a movie afterward without any plan in mind. Because I just can't allow myself to believe that they actually had 80 pages of the sentence Rob walks around some more repeated over and over again. There's no way you could plan something and have it turn out this bad. They had to have been making it up as they went. Okay, so after wasting nearly three minutes, we see Rob change into his work clothes, and again, they show the entire action, eating up another minute or so of screen time. Then we see him stand around and light a cigarette for another good 30 seconds. And then he walks around outside the building, occasionally stopping to look at it. And this goes on for another 2 minutes and 48 seconds, before Rob finally decides to go into the f building and start the damn movie. Holy sh**. We're about 13 minutes into the movie, by the way. And this is all that has happened in terms of pertinent information. Rob tells his wife that he's going to an abandoned building. Rob arrives at the building. That's it. That's all that's happened in 13 minutes of screen time. Do I have to repeat the point I made in my review of Little Red Riding Hood about how you need to actually have things happening in your movie? You know what, f it. Let's compare this piece of to the last movie I reviewed. This is what happens in the first 13 minutes of Fred the movie. Fred introduces himself to the audience and explains that it's Friday. Fred stalks his crush, Judy, back to her house on their way back from school. Fred's antics demonstrate his character. A flashback reveals that Fred gets bullied by the movie's antagonist, Kevin. Fred gets upset because he saw Judy singing with Kevin. Fred consults his imaginary father and gets the idea to invite Judy over so they can sing together. Fred tries to walk to Judy's house but gets stopped by Kevin. F***ing Fred the movie has more forward plot progression in its first 13 minutes than The Last Light. Fred the movie is better written and better paced than The Last Light. The Last Light is a worse movie than Fred the movie. That is inexcusable. It's like, Fred is annoying, but at least it's not boring. But this movie is so boring that's boringness transcends into annoyingness. Because I just sit here getting increasingly frustrated thinking about everything this movie could be doing that it isn't.
What the? I'm an Irish ghost, you knobhead. I could see that. What do you want? I'm just hiding from those kids outside. Kids? Aye, they be have to be lucky chams. You serious? No, I'm here to haunt you, you knobhead. What for? No particular reason. I just get drunk, and I gotta do some haunting. You know how it goes. How does a ghost get drunk? By drinking, you knobhead. Oh, you like to drink, huh? Have I go get one of the bottles under my sink and you drink that? What's that gonna do, you daft c I'm already dead. Maybe it'll clean that filthy mouth of yours. Hey, f you, buddy. Hey, what happened to your accent? Uh, what do you mean? You're faking it, aren't you? Uh, no. You're not Irish. What else are you lying about? Yeah, you better float away, you prick. So Rob finally goes into the building and wastes another minute lighting a cigarette, even though he just smoked one only three minutes ago. When suddenly, he hears a thumping sound. Then he stands there for a while, then a door slams in his face, and we hear a kid laughing. Rob assumes there's kids trespassing in the building, so he pulls out his stupid flashlight camera and starts looking for them. And then we get to watch him silently walk around this building for the next, and I'm not exaggerating, TEN MINUTES! A full 10 minutes of this movie's runtime is taken up by a guy just walking around, not saying anything or doing anything pertinent to the plot. I mean, you could argue that the point is to establish the location, but it shouldn't take 10 minutes to do that, and it's so dark most of the time that we can't even see it anyway. It's like it just keeps getting worse. Normally when I review a movie, I go through it scene for scene, occasionally stopping to comment on something and creating a uh, context for my criticisms. But literally nothing happens in almost every scene for the first half of this movie, and there's only so many times I can describe a scene by saying nothing happens before it starts to get monotonous. Uh, there are only so many ways I could call a movie boring. It's like they designed this movie to be as difficult to analyze as possible, in the hopes that anybody who tried will just give up. Okay, so after 10 minutes of watching this guy walk around, some hands slowly reach out to grab him. I swear I did not add that music. The movie really has that cartoonish dramatic sting, the same one you've probably only ever heard in YouTube videos for comedic effect. Only this movie used it unironically. I think it's from the iMovie stock music library or something. So the hands grab Rob, and he gets pulled through a doorway. He drops his flashlight camera so we get to see a kid run past the frame because little kids are creepy, I guess. Then Rob comes back. Instead of making a beeline for the exit like anyone with a brain would, Rob decides to sit down and point the flashlight at his face like nobody in a scary situation ever would. But I guess they needed to light the actor's face and they couldn't think of a better way to do it. He hears a sound, so he looks around, and then a kid comes running up and starts hitting him. And he just sits there, not trying to get up and run or anything, until she disappears. Then Rob looks around some more, this time showing the flashlight camera's POV, because this movie sometimes wants to be a found footage movie, but doesn't want to commit to the self-imposed limitations inherent to that style of filmmaking, because it would be too difficult. He eventually finds a hole in the wall, gets a jump scare, and then just sits down again. Thank it. So even though he has already experienced a child with super strength pulling his 300 pound ass through a doorway, and another kid beat the bejesus out of him and then suddenly disappear, Robbie Boy here is still convinced that they're just normal kids playing a prank on him. So Rob continues to look around, feels a kid touching his hair, who then suddenly vanishes again, and then this happens. So instead of immediately running from the kid who makes Adobe After Effects monster faces, Rob stands there for a while, and then runs. He runs around, occasionally seeing the kid appearing in different places, until he stops by an open window and gets scared by the kid again, uh, causing him to fall out and do a Wilhelm scream. But Rob just ends up on the roof, and I, I guess it's too high for him to climb down, so he just kind of lights another cigarette, then decides to board up the windows and trap the kids inside. You wanna play? We'll see how you feel when I lock you up in this place. You'll never see daylight again. Yeah, he's still convinced it's just kids, and now he wants to kill them because of a prank. So Rob picks up his flashlight and goes back inside. He walks past the door where we could clearly see a guy standing behind the window, 
but Rob doesn't see him. And the way the scene is executed, I can't tell if it's intentional, or if they just had some crew member back there and just thought we wouldn't notice. Rob finds a hammer, and we get a montage of him boarding up the windows using conveniently placed sheets of plywood that just happen to be laying around. He stops when he hears noises, gets startled by his plywood falling over, then somehow doesn't hear the large man loudly dragging a body down the hallway, literally right behind him. The hell is this graffiti? Lotion? What is the Gold Bond gang hang out here? Rob's selective hearing singles out some noises coming from down the hallway, so he looks and sees the big guy beating up a woman, and just stands there as the guy yells at him to get out. Rob runs around for a while, then stops to point the flashlight at his face again. Who does that? Oi, knobhead! Oh, you're back? That's right, and I brought my shillelagh! What's a shillelagh? It's what I use to beat up knobheads. Knobheads like... Alex Bones, Black Magic 95, Rick Swiss 99, Charles J. Harris, Charlie, Chris Angus, Groby Gomes II, Diesel Weasel, Frenchie, uh, Henry Rennie Nipana, Jack Guevara, G25 Moby, Joe Berg, John Reddington, K55, Lefty, Squeezy, Michael Lowe, uh, Nicholas Slater, Nighthawk, Noah Brokner, uh, Noble Team 33, Big T, Akko, Greg L, Reed Strickland, Lee Toast, Ricky Baruga, uh, the Bruin Scepter, Samurai Rai, Sierra Van Blattel, Sirius the Fox, the, the Ghost of Macaulay Culkin, The Sauce Guy, Twilight City Studios News the Channel, Will Gardard, Victor Alexandrovich Gonto, and Gon Owen. Oh, so it's a fight you're after. Well, listen, buddy. I don't value my own life. So if you want to go down this road, I'm more than happy to be your tour guide. Hey, we're about to go William Wallace on you. William Wallace was Scottish, you idiot. And you can drop the accent. I already know it's fake. The only thing fake around here is the glass eyes I'm going to put in your head after I stuff your corpse with sawdust and put it next to my TV. Bring it on, you blarney stone kissing son of a bitch. Oh, hold on. It's All right, you drunken, translucent bastard. I'm. Hey, where'd you go? Mother. We then cut back to Rob's house, where Wifey McWife answers the phone and hears her friend or sister or whatever telling her to answer the door. Wifey answers the door, and her sister slash friend tries to scare her. Then they sit down and drink coffee. Wifey tells her sister slash friend, who I'm gonna call She-Man because her haircut kind of looks like He-Man's, that her uh, husband got a job boarding up windows at the Dixon house. Yeah, I, I guess that's the name of the building. She-Man then spills her coffee, which has somehow magically turned into water because she had a vision or a flashback or something. And then tells Wifey that place is known for violent paranormal activity. Violent paranormal activity. Wifey laughs at her, and then She-Man says she knows a girl who went there with a team of paranormal investigators, and it, all the men got attacked. The men! All the men were attacked by something. Uh, then we cut back to the Dixon house where we see Rob, still pointing the flashlight at his own face like no one would ever do, and talking to himself. <sighs> it's just a bunch of kids messing with you. <sighs> messing with your head. So even though he's seen several kids mysteriously appear and disappear, and contort their faces in inhuman ways, physically attack him and even drag him through a doorway, and he just saw a large man beating up a woman, Rob is still convinced that they're just kids playing tricks on him. This guy might just be the dumbest movie protagonist I have ever seen. Rob gets up and guess what he does? He silently walks around some more. He eventually finds a door labeled clinical room and goes inside. Then nothing happens. We cut to Wifey and She-Man driving around, I guess on their way to the Dixon house. For no reason other than it makes it easier to film, She-Man stops the car and tells Wifey that she suspects the ghost at the Dixon house will try to stop Rob from boarding up the windows because they don't want to be trapped inside. I guess because ghosts can't get past plywood. Hey, if the ghosts are worried about being trapped inside the building, that implies they're not already trapped and can leave. So why don't they just leave if they don't want to be trapped? She-Man tells Wifey that everyone has a spirit guide who follows them around to keep them from endangering themselves. We can see how well that worked out for Rob. Back at the Dixon house, Rob hears a voice begging for help. Please, help me. So being an idiot, Rob continues to walk around until another pair of hands pulls him through a window, then everything goes black. Then we cut back to Wifey and She-Man driving up to the fence outside the Dixon house. She-Man comments on the gate being locked. Wifey complains that she doesn't have a cell phone signal. Then they see Rob's car, so they decide they need to get inside. 
But I guess climbing over the fence would be too hard, so they decide to drive around until they find another way in. Back in the building, Rob wakes up in a dark crawl space or something. We cut back to Wifey and She-Man finding a hole in the fence. Then we cut back to Rob escaping the crawl space while that Creative Commons track, The House of Leaves by Kevin McLeod plays in the background. You know that song used in every creepypasta video on YouTube? I actually buy licenses to use most of the music you hear in my YouTube videos. They couldn't do that for their feature-length movie. The music continues to build as Rob silently walks around some more until he finds a guy hiding under a blanket. They're everywhere. Who is? They lock me in the room and they come in every night the same thing. Who does? Of course the guy doesn't just say who or what they are, because the movie has to invoke horror movie cliché number 376. Crazy guy found at spooky location is too scared to answer basic questions. They're interrupted by a noise, but what they don't know is it's just Wifey and She-Man banging on the door. So the blanket guy tells Rob his name is Michael, and explains that the ghosts trap people in the walls. Rob says there are no ghosts because, somehow, he's still convinced they're just a bunch of kids. There's no ghost. It's just a bunch of kids f***ing with us. You know, I could buy the premise that this guy still believes it's just a bunch of kids playing a prank if everything we've seen so far could be written off as that. But this guy has seen, with his own eyes, a grown man beating up a woman, then he got dragged through a hole and knocked out. So even if it isn't ghosts, it's still very clearly and unambiguously not just a bunch of kids. That is, unless this guy is really stupid enough to believe that a violent six-foot-tall man is a nine-year-old with a gland problem. This is what I hate about these kinds of movies. The writing is so bad that the only way it can work is if the characters are so inhumanly stupid that they're unbelievable. The movie is expecting me to believe that a guy could find himself in this situation and still believe that all the supernatural sh happening around him is just kids playing a prank. So you're expecting realism in a movie about ghosts? I'm expecting people in movies to act like people! The whole point of having human characters in an exotic situation is to ground it in some kind of reality by having them react the way humans would. If you're just gonna throw up your hands and say, Let's have the characters do whatever because the plot demands it, regardless of how stupid it is and whether or not it makes sense in context, huh? then what's the point? The movie might as well just be noise. I hate this movie. A door slams, and then Rob runs out of the room. But then he turns around and sees a ghost next to Michael and then the door slams shut. Rob manages to get the door open, but Michael's gone now. Guess what happens next? Just take a guess. Rob silently walks around some more. So after three minutes of this Rob looks at himself in a mirror for no reason, and then this happens. What does it mean? Nothing. It's just a simple special effect they knew how to do, so they decided to do it even though it doesn't add anything to the movie. Then Rob walks around some more until he finds a hole in the wall and decides to climb through. We then cut to Wifey and She-Man coming in through a window, and then we cut back to Rob walking around some more. He walks around for a whole five minutes until he gives up looking for Michael and just goes back out the hole, making that last five minutes completely pointless. We cut back to Wifey and She-Man. She-Man says they need to find Rob, but Wifey says she's only gonna go where there's light because they didn't bring a flashlight. Yes, they came to an old abandoned building, knowing they were coming here, and didn't bring a flashlight. Jesus Christ. She-Man tells Wifey to use the light on her phone, and then they walk off with no idea of where they're going. Then we cut back to Rob, continuing to silently walk around until he sees a silhouette of a hooded figure and runs. He goes downstairs, but sees the hooded figure again, this time holding Michael, who calls out to him just before dying. Then Rob walks around so, you know what, J just kill me. Wifey and She-Man whine about not being able to find Rob. Then Rob sees another kid and stumbles backwards, causing him to knock over a pile of debris which falls onto Wifey and She-Man. So I guess they're dead now. Good. We get more silent walking around. Then Rob gets ambushed by another ghost kid. They struggle for an unnecessarily long time, but then the movie tries to make it scary or exciting or whatever by doing this post-digital camera shake effect. The ghost girl leaves for no reason, then Rob finds a lighter and walks around some more. He falls down some stairs, steps on Wifey's body without realizing it, then finds himself in a dark room when his lighter goes out. He lights a match and then sees some ghosts. A woman screams, and then the movie ends with another Kevin McLeod song. F*** this movie. Hey, possum, 
Let's finish what we started. I already finished inside your mom. Me mother's been dead for over 200 years. Oh, that's why she was so easy. You bastard! Huh. I guess it was just kids the whole time.